Hello and welcome to Green Country Custom Baits. I'm Jeff. Um, today's video in the com beginner's complete tutorial on painting crankbaits, we're going to be talking about how you take a crankbait that is painted and get it to this. And when do you need to do that? So after the quick intro, we're going to dive right in to the processes I use and what is needed in order to prep your baits for custom painting. Okay, so on today's topic, we're going to be talking about do I need to remove the paint from the crankbait in order to have a great pattern? Well, the answer is not always uh, yes. Uh, in the case of this bait, this bait is pretty rough. If you were to spray paint over this with paint chipping, and you're just not going to get as quick, as good a finish uh, as you desire. Now, this is a brand new bait. Paint is extremely smooth. Well, we'll talk about the method for this. This one, if you spray paint over it, it's going to come out just as smooth as this is if you do a good job of layering the paint. Okay. If you're going to do a bait that has a, you want a transparent belly, then you're going to have to remove the paint from that particular crank. Now, with that being said, you have to have a clear body crankbait in order to get this particular effect. Whereas on this wiggle wart, the old Missouri Crawl remake, uh, it has a solid belly. This is a pre-Rapala bait. It was white plastic. You're not going to be able to get that type of effect on this particular bait. But we want a nice, smooth, finish product. You want to be proud of your bait. So today's video is about prepping the baits, uh, buying blank baits that's ready to go. Uh, this is a Strike King 10XD uh, in the Nude series. So uh, you would think you could just start painting it. Okay, but there's a few steps that's needed in order to get that. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So hold on tight. We're going to go through the processes that I use. Okay, so a few of the products I use. If I've got a really nice bait, and we're talking a crankbait, that uh, really doesn't need all the paint removed. Uh, my, one of my go-to products is just a 3M 400 grit sandpaper. Okay? And I'll generally just, you know, cut a little bit of a strip of it off, but all you want to do is go through and just kind of scratch that clear coat up all the way around the bait. Make sure you get the nose, uh, you know, and just rough that, rough that clear coat up so that your paint has something to stick to. All right. Uh, I'll even hit the bill, you know, sometimes depending on the clear coat that you're using, uh, you know, and you just, you just get scratches in the, the previous clear coat. Um, that's one excellent method for a bait that doesn't need the paint removed. Uh, another one I've used is I buy these uh, fine grit sanding sponges. Uh, you know, they're, they're somewhat flexible and again, same process. Just uh, use them to, you know, scratch, scratch the previous paint up. These are a great method to use. Uh, the other one's kind of a wet dry and I'll even use it uh, especially after uh, sandblasting to kind of smooth that plastic back out. Okay, so those are two methods uh, that are very cheap, very economical in order to uh, get your bodies prepared for paint and where you know you're going to be successful that that paint's going to stick and hold. Uh, if you don't do that, you take a great risk and that paint just peeling off. Next thing we need to talk about is if we've got a bait that is really rough, is really beat up. Here's a, here's a good example here. Uh, this is an old, old bait. We've got paint completely missing down to the plastic here. We got chips, we got rough, we got a lot of times you'll get hook rash. Uh, for me, I'm gonna remove all the paint. Uh, I don't care if it's white plastic, clear plastic, I'm gonna take that bait all the way down to the plastic in order to get the best finish, finished product that I can get. So 
We're gonna walk you through it. I've tried lots of different methods. I've tried to sand it all the way off. I've soaked it in different chemicals. And one thing I did is I invested and stay with me. We're gonna take a quick trip over here in the uh, garage and I'll show you the uh, machine that I use. And it's a little dark in this corner, but this is what I invested in uh, once I saved up enough money is I got me a sandblaster. Uh, again, cheap, uh, fairly inexpensive at Harbor Freight. It's got a light, it's got a clear top. As you can tell, you get to where you can't see through it from all the sanding, sandblasting, but you get your media up, it comes with gloves and uh, your, your brush, okay? You, uh, it's, it's still a dirty process. It still gets out quite a bit, uh, but you just hook your air compressor up, you know, and run it at anywhere from 90 to 100 pounds of, uh, using a sandblaster to completely remove all the paint. DT10s or any wood-based crankbait. Okay, one, you don't want to weight them down. This one's sealed up. Uh, and so, you, you know, you really want, you want to take a lot of that paint off. You want, you want to get it down to where it's going to run good. If you're inexperienced with the sandblaster, take it from my advice. Be extremely careful on wood baits. Once you start seeing that white seal coat, you got to stop sandblasting. You get into that soft balsa wood that they use on these, uh, that sandblaster will definitely ruin. Uh, if you go below the seal coat, you've got to make sure that you've got a sealer uh, to keep that water from infiltrating that balsa wood and swelling and cracking the paint. So sandblasting crankbaits. How do we remove the paint? How do we get a good smooth finish? I'm going to be doing a real skill pattern today. So all of this paint has got to come off and go all the way to the white, clear plastic in order for this pattern to work out. So stick around. I'll show you how I do my lure press. Okay, we're going to shoot a little video using the air compressor. It's going to be really loud. Um, and I'll get a little bit of beforehand video. We'll do this crankbait. I've got several here to do. Uh, we'll shoot a little bit of it while I'm running it. Again, get the media inside. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll show you the finished product. Uh, and then how we um, polish it up from there to get a good smooth surface. Stay with me. I'm going to wear a little dust mask and remove the hat. It's still a dusty product, even though it's contained inside of a, a booth. So. Okay, stripped it down, just a few little streaks left, that'll sand right out because I'll go back with 400 grit sandpaper and smooth everything back out and that bait's ready to paint. So we'll come back and give you an update when we do that.
after you've wet sanded them or not wet sanded, dry sanded them. It's a good idea to go over them with a little acetone and move all the, the dust and just a quick wipe down all the oils off your hands. I'm going to do a quick update on the sandblasting and uh, the wet sanding uh, that you've seen on camera. Uh, these are two Norman baits that uh, had really, really nice paint on them. Could have been painted over, but uh, being that we're going to do a real scale pattern on it, we needed to get it to the to the clear plastic. And you can see how good a job that does. Uh, puts a good rough finish on that plastic in order that paint can uh, adhere to it really well. Uh, next step is just to tape the bills. I just use blue painter's tape. Real simple process. Just wrap it around. We want to cover that bill completely up. Make sure we got all the parts to it. And that bait's ready to be painted. These are the Mood Series from Strike King. So the only thing they'll need is uh, take some of that fine sandpaper, rough up that clear coat a little bit. Uh, but being that the eyes are in great shape, I'm going to shoot a quick video on how I remove the eyes. I just used an old X-Acto knife that was kind of dulled off and uh, just kind of want to get up underneath that eye and just kind of work around it. Really need my glasses in for this process. Hope you can still see it. There's the eye. It comes out perfect. And that, re that eye can be super glued back on and reused. The way I used to do it is to, uh, let me just show you, uh, especially if you're going to go back and you want to paint your eyes, just put a little masking tape around it, just like this, and then use your fingernail to outline that eye. Really good like this. And now we need a sharp exacto knife for this. Then you just go around with And there you have it. And now you can paint the bait. Uh, come back after the bait's finished before clear coat peel that off and you got your eye perfectly um, good as new and don't have to pry it off if you want to take the time to to go around it so two techniques for uh, protecting a, a perfectly brand new good good looking eye uh, that you can use in your repertoire on custom painting crankbaits so again thank you for stopping in and checking out the uh, uh, lure prep kind of finish up video uh, if there's some other things that you'd like to see or got questions about, please leave a comment in the box below. Uh, I'll also leave a link in the description to, to uh, the other uh, parts of the uh, <clears throat> complete tutorial. Um, and uh, so we'll see you on the next trip, which is going to be, uh, we're going to start getting into to spraying some baits, putting some patterns on. We'll talk shad patterns first.